Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today let's make a muck dyed geode and let's use all of our Happy Cat tie-dye colors. I'm starting a shirt that's been prepped like normal and I have it turned inside out. I'm gonna do multiple geodes on this shirt. So I'm finding an area where I'd like for the center of one of the geodes to be, pinching that area. And by the way, I'm just grabbing one layer of fabric. I'm gonna lift the shirt up off of the table and give it a little shake so that it kind of falls naturally. Then I'm gonna slide my hand down to where I want the very outer rings of the geode to be and start tying that area with sinew. I'm gonna keep this geode portion a little bit messy as I'm tying it because I don't want it to look like a bullseye. So you'll see as I keep tying the rings, I kind of mess up the fabric periodically. And as I get closer to the center of the geode, I'm going to start kind of pushing that fabric down inside, really trying to make it messy and unusual. I'm also varying the distance between each one of the lines or the rings that I'm tying. Really, the messier and the more random you make it, the better the geodes look. They just look more natural. Okay, so I'm starting to get close to the center of the geode. And as I'm tying the center, I'm going to, like I said, keep pushing that fabric down inside and really keep it pretty messy. I'm actually gonna go ahead and split the center into two. So I'm actually gonna take the sinew line straight down through the fabric. That's going to divide this center into two different centers. And then I'm going to tie each one the same way I tied the rest of the geode. I'm going to take the sinew lines out toward the center and I'm going to continue pushing the fabric down inside and keeping that area messy. Once I get out to the end of this little area or the center of this area, I'm going to make that last line or tie that last line and then I'm going to start winding the sinew back down toward where I began so that I can tie the other portion of the center of this geode. Once I get back to where I divided my center into two areas, I'm going to start using the sinew to tie the other area. You can tie your centers however you want to. If you want to just come out and make a single center in your geode, that's perfectly fine. If you want to make more than one center, you can even make two or three centers. However you want to do it, it is totally up to you. That's kind of one of the things that makes geodes so cool is they're all so unique. When you mess up that fabric and you kind of push it in and work with it a little bit, each one turns out looking totally different. I've gone ahead and done this one single geode at normal speed. So this is how long it took me to actually tie this geode. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the rest of the tying process, but if you want to see this at a slower speed, on YouTube there's a settings icon and you can click that settings icon and change your playback speed to a speed that's more comfortable for you. Once I get finished with this geode, I'm going to cut my sinew off and move on to another area of the shirt. You can put as many or as few geodes on the shirt as you'd like to. I personally I'm not a huge fan of the shirts that have a whole bunch of little tiny geodes on them. I like my geodes to be a little bit bigger. I just think it kind of doesn't make the shirt quite as busy. But that is a personal preference thing. If you like a whole bunch of really small geodes on your shirt, go for it. The only suggestion that I would have is kind of bear in mind who's wearing the shirt. I try to start my geodes someplace where if it's a lady wearing the shirt, the centers of the geode are not going to be in a really weird area. And I think you kind of know what I mean by that.
Once I have all the geodes tied on the shirt that I'm going to put on the shirt, I'm going to take my sinew down in between that area between the geodes. I'm going to tie some lines in that space just so that it's not totally plain whenever I apply the dye. It also kind of helps because if you'll notice I'm flattening my geodes out as I'm putting that sinew in between them. I'm going to actually dye this one in the muck so it's not as big of a deal but if I was going to rack dye this geode doing that kind of flattens them out a little bit and makes them a little bit easier to apply the dye to. Then as always I'm going to put the shirt aside and allow it to dry out completely before I apply the dye. If you'd like more information on that, I have a link down below in the description for this video to my website and I have a blog post about that subject. Okay, so I have a plastic container and down inside of the plastic container I have one of the plastic dish pans which I purchased from the Dollar Tree Dollar Store that I'm going to place the shirt inside. Then like I mentioned, I'm going to muck dye this shirt and all that means is that I'm going to allow the shirt to process down inside of the melting ice that's mixed with the dye. That's the definition of muck. So I'm going to start by adding the ice on top of the shirt inside the container. Like I mentioned, I'm going to use all my Happy Cat tie dye colors. I'm going to apply the dye in stripes across the ice. And I'll give you the colors that I'm going to use in order. I'm starting with Oat Milk, Mystic Blue, Flying Forest, Owl Bear, Black Magic, Dragon Egg, Silver Spring, Noble Purple, Raspberry Mist, Wandwood, Ice Storm, Hurricane Bay, Strawberry Skies, Almondine, and Arcane Eye. I don't own all of the Happy Cat tie-dye colors yet, so these are just the ones that I do have. By the way, if you haven't ordered any of the dye colors from Amanda at Happy Cat Tie Dye yet, she's another small business owner who mixes her own dye colors. And most of the colors that she mixes, she mixes specifically for ice dyeing. So they have fantastic dye splits. Which by the way, if you're wondering what that term means, I know a lot of us who do ice dyeing refer to dye splits and color splits. And if you're new, I know that can be maybe a little bit confusing for you. Most colors are mixed dye colors. Some colors are pure colors, and the pure colors are ones that will not split. So they are a single color of dye. If you use them as a liquid, they're one color. If you use them with ice, they're the same color. There's really no difference in that color. But most dye colors are mixes. And what that means is, whoever mixed the color took several different powdered dye colors, blended them together to make that color. So when you use it as a liquid, it's one color. And when you use it for ice dyeing, some of the component colors that were used in that powdered dye mix will split out and show those colors. So for example, just like we all learned, you know, in grade school, if you mix blue and red together, you get purple. So if you have a purple dye color, if it has some blue components and some red components, you may see some little glimpses of blue and red or splits of blue and red on your shirt. It's not quite the same with all the dye colors though. Some dye colors split out really unusual colors that you wouldn't expect. For example, Pro Chemicals Dusty Purple splits out green, which if you go back to the grade school example is not one of the components of purple, but it looks really cool. That's one of the things that makes ice dyeing so much fun is seeing the interesting colors that show up. Now I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of additional soda ash over the top and then place the shirt aside and allow it to process. After the ice melted, I left the shirt for about 48 hours before I started rinsing it. Okay, so you'll notice when I start pouring out the muck, it's really pretty dark. All those colors have mixed together and kind of made a brown shade. If you'll also notice, I had enough muck to cover the top of the shirt, which is what I wanted. I wanted a shirt that was sitting all the way down in the muck, not just barely down in the muck. So in order to get that, I had to add plenty of ice on top so that when it melted, I had enough liquid to cover the shirt. I'm gonna start rinsing the way I normally do by rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. After I rinse in cold for a little while, I'm gonna go ahead and untie the shirt. 
And then I'm going to warm the water up to hot and continue rinsing in hot water to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Because the shirt is so dark and a lot of the dark dye is coming out of the shirt, instead of just continuing to rinse for a long time, I'm going to run some really hot water in my utility sink, add a little bit of blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, and allow the shirt to soak. When the hot water cools off, I'm going to change it out and continue that soaking process until the water is remaining almost clear. Then I'm going to put the shirt along with some Dharma's Professional Textile Detergent into my washing machine and wash it using a hot water cycle. Okay, so the shirt's been washed and dried and then I gave it a quick iron. So let's see what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? Well, this one's pretty dark, but it actually is still really pretty. I mean, you know, sometimes adding more is more. And sometimes adding more is just too much. And I'm thinking adding more was a little too much in this situation. There were just too many colors. They got a little muddied together and it didn't quite showcase the colors as well as it should have. But honestly, when I dyed this one, I thought, let's just try something different. Let's just use all the happy cat colors and see what happens. Well, I'm not probably going to do that one again, but I do really like the shirt. You know, I tend to like darker colorings and stuff on shirts. And so this one is right up my alley. Pops of color do stand out on the shirt though. And I don't think it's quite as dark in person as it looks in the photographs. But what do you guys think about the geodes? I think they all turned out looking really cool. The one that I tied that I didn't speed up so that you could see exactly how I tied it is the one that's up on the shoulder of the shirt on the front portion. And I think that one looks really cool, but I think all of them end up being really cool. Like I said, I didn't put just a whole bunch of little bitty geodes. I let the geodes breathe a little bit. And then I added in those lines in between all the individual geodes. And that kind of gives some interest to the middle portion of the shirt. I love the centers. The centers are all really cool and not a single one of them looks like a bullseye. So I think that's a win. But what do you guys think? Do you like the shirt? Do you think it looks cool? Be honest with me. I think more is just too much in this case. But what do you guys think? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed watching the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.